So what I've done here is I've taken a ground plan on the same piece of paper. I've set up my ground plan here where I have a proscenium arch right there with a plaster line going across to the other, other side of the proscenium. We've got center line going up the, here of this stage. We have our apron and our pit. And we have a sight line right here where the audience member on the extreme house right will be sitting. And sight line lines indicating what they can see. They can see right off the stage here. They'll be able to see the backstage area over here. We've added a masking leg right there. And we've added another one on this side, though I didn't draw for the class the sight lines from this direction. What matches this a proscenium, what makes this project so uh, efficient, is that since we have the ground plan here, I started drawing the ground plan here. And if I'm doing this in one shot, which is much more efficient than, than trying to retrace your steps, if you have your proscenium here, you automatically know that your proscenium is going to be here. So, and if you have your back wall up here, you know that your back wall is going to continue up the paper like that. So in section view, we can see the back wall right there, and we see the back wall is lined up here. Using my parallel rule, I can simply come down and line it up to my proscenium arch here on the back and draw my line like so. I have my proscenium line here that I've drawn earlier. My proscenium is that thick. I can get the measurement from right here. I don't need to remeasure, and I just draw my line all the way up like so. I did have to measure the height from here to here. Once I measured the height, I took my triangle, and I gave myself a line there, just like that, and then gave myself a few of these um, hatching lines using the ruler like so, the triangle like so. Once we have this information, I can have my sight line marked from this drawing transfer straight over to this side, and then I measured the height. We decided that it was about four feet off the floor, about where someone's eyes would be. And the sight lines from that position line up from here to the proscenium arch, the top. We draw our sight line like so, and we see that the audience member can see further up. So we stuck a border here. We hung the border here. The, our border is 10 feet tall, and we wanted to have a certain clearance here. So I started from down here and went up here. And we know that this now blocks the audience from seeing anything up here in the fly system. And when I drew this line, I simply drew a line here to represent it. I did measure it with a scale rule in quarter inch scale. It's 10 feet tall, right, like that. So I measured it there. But without moving the parallel rule, I went over here and drew a line across to represent the border going straight across. So now I have it lined up here and I have it lined up here. The sight lines over here wanted a leg here. So if I draw that leg right over here, there's the leg, I can simply draw it very, very quickly right over here. And I have my height, I did measure this, it's 28 feet tall, which is the height of our standard legs here at this theater. And I drew a t pipe at the top and then I drew the, top, the uh, fly line above there in a much lighter line weight up to the grid, which is measured. We measured the height of the out position. The grid is higher than this, but the pipe flies out to this line right here, which I drew as a guideline earlier. We then also examined uh, how quickly you can create this section as you're drawing the set design. We have a set, let's say the back wall is right here. This is where we drew a back wall, right there. At the same time, you can draw the back wall sitting on your stage, and we had to figure out how tall is the set. So I think we just estimated that we were going to draw a 20-foot tall wall for this back line. Now, since this is the same place as this line, I already knew that it was going to go here. I just had to measure the height. This line here for the back wall, right around me, that back wall right there is about right here. And we decided that this was going to be 12 feet tall. So I measured 12 feet. And then I had the line. The beauty about this is that I didn't have to measure up and down stage at all. I already had the location from this drawing over here and just transferred it using the paper. We then created a door. So if we have a door or an archway right there, we transfer that over to here and just drew the line. The next uh, area of the door right here, it's downstage. This door is drawn at about four feet wide, but in Side view, it's not going to be four feet wide because we're not doing this in perspective. 
So I just take the mark, there's where the door is going to be from section view. So I draw the line here, there's the doorway. Uh, it happens to line up to this, uh, to this leg, which for illustration purposes was a little bit um, confusing. So let me erase part of the leg just to show it to you there. Okay, so there's the height of the door. We then started talking about a window. If we have a window over here on this back wall, we drew a window at approximately whatever height this is, a little higher than the door, so it's a little higher of a window. And we discussed how the sight lines from this audience member here, this audience member is going to be able to see through the window onto this back wall right there to that height. And then we discussed, we, we made up a balcony location of, uh, of here, which is totally off on our theater, but we made it up. Uh, if that's the sight line for our balcony position, the balcony person is going to be able to see through the window there. So we've discovered that we need to paint, as a scenic designer, we need to deal with painting this much material when we're looking through the window. If we transfer back here over to the ground plan, the sight lines from the left and right audience, we need to deal with this much space for the paint job on the back wall. And it carries through to lighting as well. The lighting designer needs to put lighting units outside the view of what the audience can see. What we didn't cover during the class, um, and I'll add it now, is that the sight line of this person, we can see over this wall. And this audience member up here can also see down over the wall. So we actually have to paint the entire back wall from here up. But we don't need to worry about the floor. Again, it all depends on your sight lines. It's crucial, crucial, crucial that set designers, lighting designers, and even sound designers must use a section to figure out their lighting angles or their sight line angles to see who's going to do what. And as far as uh, sound designers go, if you stick a, a speaker somewhere in here, you need to make sure that it's not going to be seen. And your sound waves are not being blocked by some absorbent material like a curtain. So everyone really needs a sight line. To do a quick really quick rough estimate as to what a lighting unit will cover. If this is a 4590 triangle, if we're using let's say a 50 degree lighting unit, this is 45 degrees, it's pretty darn close. This light right here, if we pretend that it's a 50 degree lighting unit, it's going to light up this much. There's your light coverage from that lighting unit. This lighting unit here, if this is a 50, a lot of it is going to hit the curtain. So that's going to be an issue. Uh, so you're going to want to use something tighter. You can use a uh, 30, 60, 90 triangle, and the 30, 30 angle, which I don't have on me, the 30 angle can represent either a 36 degree, it's a little wider than the triangle, or a 26 degree, which is a little narrower than the triangle. And in this case, I've drawn a, a pretend person right here to give me some scale, and this light right here is going to be an extreme down angle, whereas if we have a front of house position out here somewhere, this light right here is just going to be lighting up like half the world. So you must use your section to figure out your lighting angles. The same thing goes for backlight. If I want to backlight this pe these people here, I need a light from somewhere in this general vicinity. So if I put my light up here, I've got to shoot inside the wall, and I've got to shoot somewhere over here. So I'm going to want to put my light somewhere in this general vicinity. And we need to talk about this border, which has now gotten in the way of the, the beam spread of that light. This is why the set designer and the lighting designer need to be in cahoots about this section so we can figure out what's going to be seen and what do we not want to be seen and what are the lights going to be able to do. In this case, we might fly the light in a little further or fly the border out a little ways. Uh, but in either case, we want to make sure that the audience member is not going to be blinded by that light so we can get away with, from this particular point of view, from this uh, audience member's point of view, we've got to keep the light out. But there's a detail. This audience member is closer, upstage, downstage, than the person who's at this position back here. So the sight line is going to be slightly different center stage. So it also depends on where this backlight is going to be hitting and who you're going to be blinding. When laying out my drawing, I've made sure to put all my uh, my drawing a little further back on my paper. It leaves me a lot of downstage area, especially handy for lighting designers. Um, and sound designers so that they can have front of house positions. They can add their positions here. It also comes in handy if you're, even if you're the set designer because when you are doing your notes 
Um, I tend to put my notes closer to me because it's easier to write close up rather than stretching all the way across the paper to use an empty space up here for notes. So if we leave this area down here clear, we can put in detail drawings a little bit closer, we can do close up work down here, and we can do the bigger stuff here. This uh, drafting is in quarter inch scale. The paper is 24 inches uh, this direction, front and back, by about uh, three and a half feet this way, uh, maybe four feet this way. Uh, I just tore it off a roll. Roll paper is always easier to deal with because you can tear off what you need. Uh, we had a little accident with the paper. As the roller uh, was going back and forth, it picked up a speck of dirt underneath the paper and ripped the paper. So I've taped it here. This is just tracing paper for rough demonstration. As far as the ground plan and section go, both of them, you'll see that there's some cross hatching to represent that these are solid objects. The wall here, the wall here, the floor here, the stage floor. Uh, this here is an elevated pit. It's in the up position here, it's in the audience level position here, and it's down, down at the basement level down here. We want to include people on our section so that we have a reference as to scale and height. This is a six foot tall person. Over here I put this representative uh, symbol of a person, a head and the shoulders in the back to show where these people might be standing, uh, which helps us figure out a lot of things. In this case, we can put a line set schedule along this side here to, for this side and a line set schedule for here. One could get away with putting a line set schedule at the center. I caution you on that because quite often someone who needs this part but doesn't need this will tear the piece of paper in half or cut it and take this off to the fly loft to work on uh, line set stuff, leaving the people who are laying out the stage this copy. And if you don't have two line set schedules written on your paper like so, um, somebody is going to be without the information. A shortcut having to do with line set schedules as far as either side is that you can uh, print out your line set schedule using a word processing program or Excel, uh, a spreadsheet. If you, the catch is that you must make sure that the distances are appropriate because the line set schedule also has to be in scale. So in this particular case we have the line coming out from this pipe and we would write down what the pipe is for, pipe number one, and then a description of what it's for, and you have to repeat it over there. Lettering uh, is the bane of many people's ex existence as far as drafting goes, uh, but you can use computer printouts. And you just uh, tape it to this when you take it to the copy center. But again, you've got to make sure that it's lined up and looks, in this particular case, communication is very important. Um, and so is presentation, especially if you're doing this for a portfolio project.